One trillion dollars. One trillion. <laughs> That's the amount of student debt that we now have in the United States. That's more than all the auto debt, more than all the credit card debt. And just to give you a sense for how big of a number one trillion dollars of student loan debt is, if you stacked one trillion one dollar bills on top of one another, it would reach one fourth of the way to the moon. The way in which we finance higher education in the United States is unsustainable, and it requires us to rethink how we deliver education and how we finance it going forward. Now these are my grandparents. Don't they look great on the big screen? Um, this is them at their graduation, Mary and Harry Brown, at their graduation from the University of Washington in 1932 for my grandfather and 1936 for my grandmother. They were the first in their families to go to college. And I remember them telling me at my graduation from college that this was one of the proudest moments of their lives. I know it would make them especially proud that I now teach entrepreneurship at their alma mater, the University of Washington. You know, getting a college degree since my grandparents' days has been that great equalizer. It's been part of the American dream. The one thing that you could do that allowed you to fulfill your promise. Meet Kelsey Griffith. She graduated last year from Ohio Northern University with $120,000 in student loans. She pays roughly $1,000 a month, and she'll be doing that for the next several decades. She works two jobs, recently moved in with her parents. But what stuck out to me about her story was that her mother recently took out a life insurance policy on her own daughter, telling the New York Times that she was fearful that if anything happened to Kelsey, she didn't know how she'd be able to pay for it, and she had co-signed on her loans. Kelsey's not alone. Two-thirds of students in the United States now take out loans to go to college. The number's higher for minorities. 81% of African Americans take out loans to get a college degree. The numbers are scary. The average loan is now $27,000. That's up 58% just since 2005. There are well over a million students that have over $100,000 in debt. 35% of students under 30 who are repaying their loans are seriously delinquent on those repayments, meaning they're 90 days or more overdue. Well, how do we get here? Tuition is the major culprit. No expenditure in the United States has risen more over the last several decades. It's up 1,000% since 1978. And just to give you a sense for how that compares, that's four times the rate of inflation. That's significantly more than housing prices have risen. And we talk about healthcare costs spiraling out of control, crazy healthcare costs. They've risen 250% during this time period versus 1,000% for tuition. Now, one could justify this incredible rise in tuition if wages could compensate for that, that increase. But that just simply hasn't been the case of late. You see here, this is a look at public four-year universities, tuition versus graduate wages of graduates from public four-year universities. And you see that while tuition has risen 72% since 2000, wages in real terms for graduates from public four-year universities have declined in real terms. So the idea that you could compensate for this massive increase in tuition with higher wages just hasn't been the case. It's interesting, during the break I talked to my father who told me that when he went in 1963 to the University of California, Berkeley, it cost him $203 for the year. <laughs> and he thought that was a lot of money. And he was like, I don't know how I'm going to pay for this. Well, at that point, the wage is more than justified. That, that is harder, that's a harder case to make today. So where does someone like Kelsey or someone who has a couple hundred dollar payment, where does that money come from to pay off these loans? I want to take a look at a budget of, a, of an average college student. The average college student today makes $45,000 a year. That's the average salary coming out of college, if you can get a job. And then I took out taxes, being conservative, 25%. Typical rent, utility, food, car, gas, just average expenses. And what you're left with at the end is roughly break even. And so the idea of putting an extra $1,000, an extra couple hundred dollars a month is very difficult for most college graduates. And so what do they do? Well, they move back in with their parents. They, or they don't pay off their loans, as I showed you from the 35% delinquency rate. And that's a problem for them because the reality is, is that the student loan is the worst kind of loan that you can take on in the United States. 
the worst. It's the only kind of loan that you can't get rid of in bankruptcy. And so that's why lenders are so willing to give loans to students who clearly can't afford them because they know they can never get rid of them. You can't escape a, a student loan. Chases you down for the rest of your life. And it makes sense, too, why an 18, 19, 20-year-old might accept more money than maybe he or she should because you're 18, 19, or 20 years old. You're not thinking about 10, 20 years hence. And then there's no natural market force on colleges and universities to keep the cost of tuition reasonable because students have such easy access to money. And so you have this vicious cycle. And we saw this once before. We had skyrocketing prices, easy money, and a housing bubble that burst to disastrous consequences in, in 2008. Why am I so passionate about this, this topic? As a venture capitalist for the last 15 years, it's my job to find the very best graduates and invest behind them and hopefully build the next great company to build the next great innovation. And the reality is, we know from surveys, that students that have significant college loans, they don't start new businesses. They can't afford to. We know from surveys they don't buy cars, they don't buy houses as often, they're less likely to get married, they're less likely to start their lives. And so this isn't just a problem for these students over here who have these big loans, it's a problem for all of us, for our economy. So what's the answer? Le less education can't be the answer. Not in a world where we're competing against the very best from around the world and, and folks are getting more and more educated and we expect that. Legislation, I think, is a, a small part of the solution. Recently, the president passed an executive act that allowed students to cap their student loan payments to a percentage of their, of their income. But that only applies to government loans, not the $150 billion in private loans that make up a significant percentage of those with large loan balances. You know, right now, Congress is vigorously debating whether or not to allow interest rates to double on student loans as of July 1st. And this is an important debate, but it's still a band-aid on a much larger problem. Our challenge is how do we educate more students for less money? I think there are two components to it. First is we need to redefine the, Ameri the, the educational component of the American dream. It used to be that when I went to college and, and my parents went, my grandparents went, the idea was you get into the best school you could get into and you'll figure out a way to pay for it. But college was so much more reasonably priced then. And I've talked to dozens and dozens of students who have large loan balances. And what I've heard consistently is that I wish I knew then what I know now. I would have made different educational choices. The second piece is that colleges, startups, we need to get into the act. And some are. The University of Washington, MIT, Harvard, Stanford have been experimenting extensively with online courses, MOOCs, these massively open online, massive open online courses. And I think there's possibility there. One of my favorite examples is Georgia Tech in combination with Udacity, which is a startup in this space, is now offering a master's degree in computer science for $7,000. That's an 80% discount, it's online. It's an 80% discount to the traditional degree. And that's, I think, a step in the right direction. What am I doing about it? I'm going to change the course I teach in entrepreneurship and focus it in on the lecture component, try to give more online the lecture component and try to save the in-classroom component for the things that can be best done in a classroom. Because you know, critics have argued that there's no way you can compare an online degree with an offline degree. The, the close student interactions, the, the small seminars, the the college experience. But online's getting better, it will continue to get better over time, and there are hybrid approaches, and there are ways to get the cost of education, higher education down. I'm experimenting myself with online courses, encourage you to do that. I'm taking some programming courses with my kids. I'm looking to make investments in this space because I know that it's part of the future. 20 years from now, <laughs> 
20 years from now, higher education will look dramatically different. Because it has to. It has to. We've allowed an entire generation of students to be placed under an unfathomable amount of debt. And I don't have a great solution today for those, for those students. But I know that we can't afford to let yet another generation, we can't keep going down this path, not another generation of students to be placed under this grand experiment to see how much debt we can load on top of them. As someone who teaches college students and as someone who's looking for the next great innovation, I'm confident that within this upcoming population of students is the next Bill Gates, the next Jeff Bezos, the next employer in your community, the next innovator, and are we going to allow them to fulfill their potential? If you are a parent or a student, think about the educational choices that make sense in light of the debt burden that you would have to take on to, to get those degrees. And, and, and does it make sense for your future? If you are a university president, this is the major problem facing your customer, the student. This is the major issue that they're, they're grappling with. Shout from the rooftops. Start a debate about this topic. Let's figure out how we can get the cost to be more reasonable and college more accessible for more students going forward. If you're an employer like I am, are, are we willing to look at new types of online courses and online degrees in this, with, with fresh eyes? Or are we going to continue to put a stigma on, on them? And let's be honest, that's, that's what these courses and these degrees have. Can we afford to continue to do that going forward? Or do we have to now look and keep an open mind at the way in which college has to change? There's a role, I think, for all of us to play in solving this important problem. I hope we have the courage to embrace the challenge. Thank you very much.